A very good morning to our lecturer, Dr. Mohamed Haikal bin Ismail, and also to our fellow friends. So today we are representing Group 9 from Chemical Engineering Thermodynamics, ECH 3120, to give a brief presentation on the topic of equilibrium constants and calculations. So before we like to start our presentation, we would like to introduce ourselves first. Well, my name is Ramesh Shoran, and my matrix number is 202725. Uh, my name is Muhammad Faisal Bin Muhammad Daros, and my matrix number is one nine three five five one. Okay, my name is Muhammad Alif Iqmal Bin Zulkafli. My matrix number one eight nine seven eight. Hello, my name is Nur Izzah Nadia bin Iskandar Shah. My matrix number is two zero zero seven four eight. Hi, my name is Siti Hana Ali Sabiti Harid. My matrix number is two zero zero six three four. Hi, my name is Nurul Asira Farhana binti Romzi. My metric number is 200519. All right. So uh, these equilibrium constants are divided into three parts, which is equilibrium constant for gas phase reaction, equilibrium constant for liquid phase or solid phase reaction, and lastly, equilibrium constant for heterogeneous reaction. So for more details, my teammates will explain further. So now, Ali will explain the first part, which is equilibrium constant for gas phase reaction. Okay, thank you Ravi for the introduction. Okay, next. Okay, uh, for the first section, we are uh, discussing about the, the equilibrium constant for gas phase reaction. Okay, for the, for the most cases, intermolecular interaction are negligible at one bar and the ideal gas assumption is valid. However, if the gas is not idle at one bar, this pressure, we go to a low enough pressure that it is an idle gas, then extrapolate back to a pressure of one bar, assuming that the gas is idle. Uh, in these cases, the standard state represents that of a hypothetical gas at one bar, where we have turned off the intermolecular interaction of the real gases. And also, we should choose the standard state pressure to be one bar or at the end. Below are the equations relating to the gas phase ratio. So next. Okay, there are three levels of rigor to solve for the fugacity of coefficient. So what is rigor? In this uh, thermodynamic equilibrium, uh, the rigor is a term that refers to a state of uh, stiffness or strictness. So for the first rigor, this first equation, this is the rigorous solution where the fugacity coefficient depends on the concentration of the species in the mixture. And for the second, uh, which is case B, it is the first approximation or known as Lewis fugacity rule. So in this case, we approximate the fugacity coefficient of species I in the mixture by the pure species fugacity coefficient which is therefore independent of concentration. So for the next case C, the final case is uh, a second approximation uh, or also known as idle gas. So for case B, uh, it can be written as a below equation to find K and for an idle gas KC can be further simplified to uh, this particular equation for idle gas. So I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Alif Kumar. Okay, next I will present to you about example of patients for the equilibrium constant for gas phase reactions. Okay, the patient is consider the production of ammonia from the catalytic reactions of stoichiometric feed of nitrogen and hydrogen. The reaction temperature is 500 degrees Celsius and the reactor pressure is 1 bar. And the equation is N2 plus 3 mole of hydrogen uh, will produce 2 mole of ammonia. The question is what is the maximum possible conversions? When A, take delta H equal to constant, and B, take delta H equal to delta HT. Okay, in the table uh, E9.7, summary of the thermochemical data for appendix A2 and A3. Okay, this show the thermochemical data for this particular equations. Okay, when you get equations, uh, the first thing that you can do is to impress express the number of mole and mole fractions in terms of equation 9.8 and 9.10. Okay, after that, uh, 
in this question, since we are using the low pressure, the ideal gas behavior is assumed. So the equilibrium constant can be written as the equation below. And, and then in terms of Einstein reaction, okay, you can substitute the value uh, for the equation below here with the up equation there. Okay, after that, uh, you can calculate the constant equilibrium uh, in the usual manner. And you can use the Gibbs energy of reaction when K is at 25 degrees Celsius, and you will get 5.81 times 10 to the power of five. Okay, for the equation A, the equation to, uh, asks you to take delta H equal to constant, uh, where you can find here that uh, the ln KT over K at 298, uh, you can see that the equation is using the this equations and you substitute the value and you will get negative 22.88 and you substitute you will get kt equal to 6.754 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Okay for the equation b where delta h equal to delta ht uh, you're using the same way as the equation a but the equation is a bit different and a bit more complicated and then you just substitute the value here and Again, you calculate the KT over here and you will get 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Okay, that's all for the example for the questions. Uh, next, I will talk about the equilibrium constant for a liquid phase uh, or a solid phase reaction. There are three cases for the liquid phase reaction. The first one is the for a Lewis render reference state. The, the equation is Fi is at the pressure of the reaction, while Fi not is at what bar. As you can see, Fi is uh, is a fugacity for the particular uh, species. So the the equation uh, as below. So for the second uh, case, for large difference between this pressure, uh, we must we must use the pointing correction described. If the pressure dependence of the fugacity is not significant, the relation between the equilibrium constant and composition becomes uh, the equation below. So the last case is in case of the uh, an ideal equation, uh, we have the equation below. So thank you. That's all from me. Next. Equilibrium constant for a liquid phase or a solid phase reaction. So the question is, consider the isomerization reaction of methyl cyclopentane to cyclohexane at 298 Kelvin. What is the equilibrium conversion? So the Gibbs energy of formation are as follow, which is delta Gibbs formation for methyl cyclopentane is equals to 31.72 kilojoule per mole. And Gibbs energy formation of cyclohexane is 26.89 kilojoule per mole. So the isomerization reaction can be written as methyl cyclopentane uh, is reversible reaction to cyclohexane. So the, to find, first we need to calculate the Gibbs energy of reaction by uh, by minus uh, by subtraction uh, by subtract the Gibbs energy formation of cyclohexane and methyl cyclopentane and we get negative four point eight three kilojoule per mole. Then we can find the value of K by using this formula, which is the uh, the value of K is seven point zero three. Then by using equation nine point two nine which is K equals to um, X, C, uh, X cyclohexane over X methyl cyclopentane, or in terms of extent of reaction, K equals to extent of reaction over one minus extent of reaction. We will get extent of reaction is about 0 0.875. And at equilibrium, it is about 87.5% of the liquid exists as cyclohexane. So that's all for me. I'll pass to Isa. Okay, next, I will explain about the equilibrium constant for a heterogeneous reaction. As we know, heterogeneous reaction is a class of chemical reaction in which the reactant are, comp uh, are components of two or more phases. If we have both uh, vapor and condensed phase uh, present, we simply treat the vapor species and the condensed species as we did before. We must always remember that 
the mole fraction in this expression, however, refer to the mole fraction in a given phase, not the total mole um, fraction. So uh, let's uh, move on to the example of the equilibrium constant for a heterogeneous reaction. Uh, calcium carbonate can uh, dissociate according to the following reaction. CaCO3, which is carbon, uh, calcium carbonate, will form CaO, which is calcium oxide, plus CO2 carbon dioxide. We consider a closed system with uh, pure CaCO3 in vacuum at 1000 Kelvin. Uh, the, the question is, what is the equilibrium pressure of the system? We can assume that the two solid phases are, are completely immiscible. At 1000 Kelvin, the following Gibbs energy of formation are reported. For CaCO3, the Gibbs energy given at 1000 Kelvin is negative 951.25, and for as calcium oxide, negative 531.09, and for carbon dioxide, negative 395.81. So for the solution, we can apply the definition of the equilibrium constant given by the first equation. Um, in the textbook, you can refer for uh, in equation 9.35. So uh, next, we, can, uh, we must treat each of three pure phases distinctly. If we assume that uh, the pressure will be low enough that we have an ideal gas at equilibrium, we can rewrite the equilibrium constant as the second equation. So uh, at low and moderate pressure, the term of corresponding to the pure species solid go to one because in the Randall uh, reference said that fugacity is equal to the pure solid fugacity. And at a very high pressure, we would have to account for the pointing, correct, uh, pointing correction since the standard state is, def uh, is defined at one bar. Thus, the equilibrium constant K is equal to the um, C, uh, CO2 partial pressure. Then we can solve for K from the uh, thermochemical data provided, which is the Gibbs energy. So we can uh, we just plug in in the uh, plug in the value, and we can get the final um, uh, final answer become 0 0.053. Okay, thus at uh, 1000 Kelvin, calcium carbonate will dissociate until the pressure reach 0.053. That's bring me to the end of our presentation. Thank you.